Hey guys, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell to be updated every time I make a new video. Thanks, let's begin. Steer clear of the Black Hills. Some messed up stuff happens there. <laughs> Return of the Werewolf. This is the 1976 novel by Guy N. Smith, or novella, because it is like 100 pages. This is the first sequel in the Werewolf trilogy by Guy N. Smith, and it's quite a doozy. The Blot. The body of Philip Owen is seemingly dug up and brought back to life by demon worshippers or something akin to that. However, not as all that it seems. As the witnesses and savaged carcasses begin to pile up, it becomes very apparent that there may be two werewolves, or just a new one. What's going on in this book? I will not spoil, but let's get into it. This book isn't amazing or anything, but it does some things that were not common or looked upon with praise back then, or even now. This does feel more like a continuation rather than a middle chapter, even though that's what it is. And it does do its own thing when compared to the first book. The mystery of who or whom the werewolf is are is built up more and really makes you wonder just what the hell is going on. Guy N. Smith was a pulp writer and therefore his books are not for everyone. They're stripped down to the basics. And that's what I've kind of had a hard time with. I enjoy the hell out of his books, but they are cliché, run-of-the-mill, and sometimes too predictable. But, but that's all in the charm of his storytelling. And with that all being said, this book is a different approach in some regards. And I am still a bit uncertain as to how I feel about the changes. Without giving away too many spoilers, the werewolf in question is quite different than what you would probably be expecting. All is revealed in the last 20 pages or so. Uh, I won't spoil what this book reminded me of like there was a movie that it kind of reminded me of if you've, if you've read this book and you've seen the movie you know what i'm talking about with the returning slew of characters that means old storylines and feelings are brought back gordon hall has a wife now but still feels the urge and bulge to sleep with the already married margaret again even though his wife is expecting to be a mother soon yeah she's pregnant not to mention that margaret has a pretty hairy <laughs> encounter with the werewolf near the end, and things turn dark. I can honestly say, in my opinion, this is one of Guy and Smith's best twists I've read so far. My best as in I wasn't expecting it. The way this one is handled could have had the reader put the book down. However, I was engaged enough to want to see this through. This is a very grim and sadistic book. The werewolf is seeking revenge and is out for blood. It's like Mr. Smith was testing the waters with Werewolf by Moonlight. How far could he go? And by Return of the Werewolf, he's letting it all out. The werewolf wants revenge. Simple enough. And a man simply known as the Lurker has lived in the woods all his life and is barely ever seen by anyone. There are some ominous descriptions of the Lurker, his intents and his plans. It's handled really well. Another aspect that is ominous about this book is the atmosphere. It's similar to the first, but a bit darker. It opens in a graveyard near a church, and it's quite disturbing what with Philip Owen being excavated and the surrounding animals acting skittish. It's a uh, kind of like the blue bottle fly from the ghoul where the animals have like a personality. It's kind of weird. They react more human than insect or, in this case, animal. PC Winters and Chief Sergeant Ford also return and give more to the story in terms of the hunt. They're there for pretty much everything. Gwyn also returns and he has a new helping hand, Tom. He's a bucked tooth redhead who has an attitude when given instructions. Victor Gunn, Margaret's husband, is still here and ever angry at Gordon. Understandably so. Gordon also angers the lurker by finding and setting off some of his traps. The whole hermit angle is also quite unsettling. Imagine a man living in the woods far from town. He knows more about you than you do him. 
It's a dark look into one's vendetta against the law. How long can a person live in solitude? Or how long could they live in solitude and not go crazy? Why would they want to leave? So many questions that contradict each other. The motive for the lurker is still the same, though. Revenge. There's a lot of revenge seeking in this book. You would think that it'll lead to a lot of bloodshed, wouldn't you? Eh. The gore! A couple of bloody clawings. There really aren't many kills. In fact, there's even less than the first one coming in at two. Or three, depending on how you look at it. It's more about the mystery and less about the slaughter. While the first book had a low body count, at least the gore was decent. Here it was pretty mundane. There is an awesome comeuppance near the end that, again, though, I can't tell you, because then it would greatly spoil the twist. Even Remus, Gordon's dog, gets a chance to shine. For the potential film score, last time I chose Danny Elfman, but I had a different feeling while reading this book. I think David Julian, who composed The Descent Parts 1 and 2 and The Cabin in the Woods, would bring the quieter and somber moments out with his dark music. He has always done a good job with bringing a little and making a lot out of it. Return of the Werewolf would benefit from a simple orchestral score that doesn't have to have a bombastic sound, but still feels intense when need be and grand during the scenes that requires it. Overall, while the first book is definitely more fun, this had a great atmosphere to it. I also love the cover. Look at that. That's awesome. The third book's cover is even better, and it's pretty much the same thing. It just adds a town on the bottom. I'll show that when I review it. The mystery is stronger than the carnage. However, I think there is enough depravity to satisfy. Still, I would have liked to have read more about the gruesome nature of the killings. I was still very entertained, though. Overall, I give Return of the Werewolf a 2 out of five. Thank you all for watching Lion Brian Gatto, the Horror Shark. Make sure to like, comment on, as well as share this video. Like my Facebook fan page and support me on Patreon, where even a dollar a month will help keep the channel going on strong. I greatly appreciate it. Put together the support accounts and other music videos that you cannot get on YouTube because of copyright and age restriction. Also, check out my TikTok. I'm on there now, too. The Horror Shark at Stock Talk Walk monetary support if you want to support the channel monetarily through paypal my paypal information is horrorshow37 at gmail.com and if you don't want to support me with any money that's fine too just hit that notification bell to be notified every time i'm making a new video and as always subscribe